Hello, I'm Matthew Francis, and if you didn't know, lasagna might just be the perfect dish. It's great for a holiday meal, a great gift to give to your new neighbor, or maybe just a perfect lazy Sunday supper. There's hundreds of ways you can make your lasagna, but if you do a few tips and tricks, it'll ensure that it comes out great every single time. Some people put just beef in their lasagna, but that can sometimes be a little bit bland. So if you do a beef and pork combo or beef and Italian sausage combo, it's incredibly delicious. And you can use a canned sauce, but I really like to make our own homemade sauce. My family cooks beef and Italian sausage together and we make a homemade marinara sauce to combine together. And then we wanna talk about the cheese, okay? You wanna go for full fat, full flavor here with the cheese, okay? You can use fresh ricotta, you can use fresh mozzarella, you can use Parmesan, any type of cheese you like, just go for full flavor. What I like to do is do fresh ricotta and you add in some fresh herbs. So in here I have some fresh basil and some parsley from our garden outside. And when it comes to lasagna, one of the challenges is making sure that it all melds together perfectly, right? You don't want it too mushy. You don't want any of the noodles to be raw. You don't want the cheese to burn. You don't want it to overflow. There's so many things that could go wrong. And what I found works really well to kind of help alleviate all of those issues is using some no boil lasagna noodles. So basically when you buy lasagna sheets in the store, you can buy the normal ones and boil them and keep them aside. But I've found often, unless you do it perfectly and then bake it really quick, sometimes those noodles can get way too mushy and soggy and your sauce and your cheese won't kind of bind together. But if you buy these no boil lasagna noodles, they're thinner, they're already kind of par cooked. And if you have a kind of thin sauce, what happens is while the lasagna is cooking, the noodles soak in all that extra moisture. So everything really kind of binds together and you get a nice clean slice. So using no boil noodles is not only easier, but it makes the end product even better. All right, so once you have all your flavorful ingredients for every single layer ready to go, we can start to assemble the lasagna. Now, first we're gonna start off with a nine by 13 baking dish. And you can even buy specialty lasagna dishes that are like three inches deep. So you can really have layers and layers and layers but I don't have that in my house. So we're gonna go with a normal nine by 13 baking dish. You just wanna make sure that you don't go too high. Cause if you go too high, you might have some spillage over. So the first thing you wanna do is put a layer of sauce on the bottom. Since we're using the no boil lasagna, you wanna make sure that your sauce is thin enough that it won't become too dry when it starts to bake. And then we can go in with our layer of noodles. I always like to kind of press them down in there. One of the most important things, especially if you have the no boil noodles, is to make sure there's enough liquid around the noodles to make sure that they can cook in the sauce as it's baking. So we're next going to put in our cheese mixture, our ricotta and herb mixture. And sometimes I find it easiest just to kind of put some dollops in and then we can spread it all around. And every few layers, you can put in some cheese. Here we have some mozzarella, full fat. Okay, and now we're gonna put in more noodles. And every time you put in a new layer of noodles, make sure you press it down. That way you're getting as much space out of your lasagna dish as possible. And then again, we're just gonna go with more sauce and more noodles and more cheese. Always wanna make sure that there is some nice wet sauce covering your noodles so they can cook. And once you sort of get towards the end, I always try to end it with one last layer of noodles, sauce, and then just top it with lots of cheese. My family likes to have mozzarella and Parmesan on top, and that's what you wanna have go in the oven and get all nice, brown, bubbly, and delicious. You wanna make sure for your top layer of noodles that you fully cover them with your sauce because if you leave any little pieces of noodle bare, they'll kind of get brittle when you bake it in the oven. So make sure you put lots and lots of sauce on the very top. And I have some Parmesan cheese I'm gonna add. The Parmesan just kind of adds a nice salty finish on top. I'm gonna put it on the middle rack in the oven and let it go for about an hour. When you, after an hour, check it if the sauce is nice and bubbly and the cheese is melted and you can kind of tell the noodles are soft, then you know it's ready to go. Take off the tin foil and then you can let the cheese brown and get all bubbly on top. All these tips and tricks that I gave you to make a really great lasagna will work for any recipe you do have. So use your mother's, use your grandmother's, use your favorite, try a new one. On allrecipes.com, we have tons of lasagna recipes for you to choose from. So go down in the description box below and find one of your favorites. 
Thank you for watching. I'm Matthew Francis. And if you enjoyed watching this video, please subscribe to All Recipes. We make a bunch of different pasta videos, tips and tricks videos that will really help you out in the kitchen. And don't forget to press the notification bell so you don't miss any of those great videos we do make. In the comment section down below, tell me how you like your lasagna. Do you add veggies in? Do you use bechamel? Do you like beef all by itself, beef and pork? Tell me what you like down below. And yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.